Hey everybody, it's Justin from Justin's POV. It is Friday the 27th and I'm going to talk today about uh, grocery shopping. So I'm trying to go over some pandemic hacks. Uh, I don't know how worried you guys are all about contracting coronavirus. It's kind of funny. Some people are still totally chill about it, I think, and some people are freaking out a lot. So I'm trying to remain calm, but just have good protocols in place to be safe and hopefully not contract coronavirus and not have to worry about it. So right now, we're all under quarantine here in Hollywood, California, in our homes. But the biggest place where we're interacting with the public usually is at the grocery stores. So I'm trying to come up with ways of minimizing uh, contamination. So like many people, I'm using an N95 mask. Um, I'll probably make a, a separate article about this, or if nothing else, I've already posted some links. Uh, about decontaminating these and being able to reuse these because these are only supposed to be used for a very short period of time and Touching them on the outside touching them on the inside. You're potentially cross-contaminating them um, Long story short, there's evidence of UV light um, being able to decontaminate them um, Also heating them in your oven for a certain period of time and rice cookers So I'll put some links to that information as well, but first and foremost uh, when going outside into a populated area like the grocery store using the mask um, Don't touch your face like I always do I, I mean this is almost impossible to not touch my face And that's kind of why I'm making this video too is all about cross-contamination and Techniques to hopefully minimize doing that. So I'm wearing the mask. I already have safety goggles You might not have these maybe you have glasses. I've heard wearing glasses is also a good idea so I'm starting off with that. Now things that I'm bringing with me to the store, I had some disinfecting wipes already. These are really hard to come by right now. And I'm trying to minimize trips to the store. General advice seems to be try to go once every two weeks or just as little as you possibly can. I try to eat fresh. I mostly eat fresh fruits and vegetables, which normally means I go to the market like once a week. That might have to change. I'm weighing out, you know, how often I, I want to go to the store to support fresh food, fresh nutrients for my immune system versus uh, possibly getting exposed to coronavirus. But I'm bringing these. Um, if you don't have these, uh, the ingredients in these disinfecting wipes are actually the exact same ingredients as uh, this disinfectant spray. These are both from Ralph's. Uh, the concentration in this, surprisingly, is about three times higher for the active chemicals uh, than this. But my point is that if you don't have either one of these, um, you can always bring just a washcloth and spray it down with a bunch of disinfectant or even just soap, I think. If nothing else, you know, they're saying wash your hands, soap kills coronavirus. Just lather this thing up with soap. And what I'm trying to do is, is create a backup for if I do touch something that has high uh, public exposure, like, you know, let's say the, the payment machine when you're paying for your groceries or you just accidentally touch the door handle or something like that. Um, I think it's good to have some wipes kind of accessible on the outside of your body just as a, as a backup plan. So recommending like if you have pants with loop, you know, you can just put, you know, your soaked cloth there. And if you do accidentally touch something, you can at least just start to disinfect your hands uh, immediately. So this will just be as a backup plan, but otherwise you can keep these in your car. Um, another thing I'm bringing are uh, trash bags. Now, um, this is for when you put stuff into your car so you can have another clean surface. Uh, if you do get trash bags, if you don't know this, the mill count on the box is for how thick the bag is. So a lot of times it's misleading. They'll say, oh, this is extra heavy duty, but you just go by the mill number. Um, the ones that are, you know, like leaf outdoor bags tend to be the strongest though. Uh, so this is the, the thickest mill that I could get, uh, 1.05 mil. These are just the uh, large trash bags from Ralph's. You get 50 of these for like 10 bucks, so that'll last you a long time. So you can bring a couple of these with you too. Now, I try to minimize what I touch at the store. So, uh, you know, going into the store, I like to just use an Ikea bag. So I don't have to touch the, um, the grocery cart. If you do touch the grocery cart, now... I'm going in with gloves when I go grocery shopping. The problem is, and I've talked about this in other videos, is that when you touch something dirty 
and then all of a sudden you touch something else, then you're possibly contaminating it. And this is where I had the hardest time with it. Um, so a couple different options. Either you're going to wear two gloves and just go through the store um, and then decontaminate everything afterwards, or you can try to have one clean hand and one dirty hand. And this is really one of the challenges is, and this is where I failed the other day. I went to the store like this. I was like, okay, I'm only going to use this hand to touch dirty stuff and only this hand I'm going to keep so I can, you know, get into my pocket and get my credit card and stuff like that. And I still mess it up. That's where having the rag, at least you can decontaminate it. But just as like an idiot proof concept, you know, you might want to consider if you're going to do this. Now, the other advantage of this is that you can make your gloves last twice as long. If you have 100 gloves, wearing two at a time, that's 50 days. Obviously, half as long, uh, half longer if you just do one at a time. And advantages. So if you only have one glove, put one hand in your pocket. Walk around with one hand in your pocket. That way you, you just don't have the temptation to, to accidentally touch something you're not supposed to touch. If you only use this hand to grab groceries and put it in your cart or put it in your Ikea bag, you know, you're minimizing your exposure risks. And then after that, when you get up to the machine, and I like to do the self-checkout if I can, get up there using the dirty hand to touch the machine, use your credit card, you know, I already have your credit card out by the way, put your credit card separate in your pocket so you can get it. And if you have two gloves on, obviously you're gonna have to take your, one of your gloves off to then have a clean hand to get into your pocket to get your credit card. Now, when you put it in the machine, that's a machine that, again, this is a point of contact with the public that many other people have put their credit card in there. Maybe this is super dirty. The whole machine might be dirty. So when you take this out, you might want to, again, go ahead and immediately just start disinfecting it on your disinfecting rag before you put it back in your pocket. Now, alternatively, and what I did the other day was after I used this thing, I just threw this in my Ikea bag. Later on, when I got home, I disinfected my card as well. So these are some ideas on trying to limit exposure. There's another video that this guy made that's a good video on when you get home with your stuff then. And again, when you put it in your, in your bag, everything in the bag might also be contaminated. Um, the people in the stores might have coronavirus. There have been a couple of Trader Joe's on the East Coast that have closed down because people have been sick. Apparently, they're linking it back to employees at the Trader Joe's store. So it's just the biggest place where we have to worry about right now is the grocery store. So when you go there, assume everything is contaminated. Assume everything needs to be wiped down, disinfected. It's a huge pain in the ass. It's just crazy to, to, to have to think this is what we have to do. But, you know, if we at least have a game plan, then it might be doable. So let, let's start with keep talking about techniques for doing this and just like brushing our teeth, maybe it's not that big of a deal after you just do it for a while and accept that that's the technique you have to do in order to protect your health. So on the Ikea bag note, um, you know, if you load up a full Ikea bag, these can also be really heavy. I use neoprene and duct tape and just reinforce the handles. And that way when it's on your shoulder, it's just not like 40 pounds digging into your shoulder. Um, but you know, you can do this or have the trash bag inside this um, and another trash bag in your trunk. So then you can just use the trash bags and the Ikea bag, everything, you know, double protected. And then the plastic, I guess, only takes a couple of days for the coronavirus to become inert and die, even though it's not alive, whatever. Um, so you can just put that over off to the side. If we're only going once every two weeks, Anything that's on the bags should eventually be dead by the time we reuse it. So anyways, that's kind of where I'm coming from right now. Hopefully some of these ideas help you guys out. Um, leave comments if you have any suggestions on stuff. Um, I hope you guys are all doing okay. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Bye-bye.